I, 25 female, have been engaged to my fiancé, 28 male, for about a month now. He's honestly amazing. He's kind, thoughtful, successful and way out of my league. I love him so much, but lately I've thought that maybe I'm not the right person for him and maybe my sister Tara, 27 female, would be better for him. Tara is everything I'm not. She's beautiful, smart, outgoing and honestly the type of woman who turns heads wherever she goes. She's always been the favourite in our family, my parents adore her and she's always making them proud. Ever since my fiancé came into the picture, it's like my family has started hinting that they think he'd be happier with her. When I first introduced him to my family, they couldn't stop talking about how perfect he was. At first, I thought it was just normal family excitement, but it's gotten kind of weird. My mom constantly comments, Tara and your fiancé just have so much in common. And my dad has said things like, it's a shame Tara didn't meet someone like him sooner. They'd make a power couple. At family gatherings, Tara and my fiancé get along well and everyone keeps pointing it out. My aunt actually said, if your sister ever decides she's ready for a serious relationship, she'd be lucky to find a guy like him while staring directly at them as they talked. I laughed it off because what else could I do? I know Tara is incredible. Honestly, I'm just not sure I'm the right person for him. Tara's also been spending a lot of time with him and my family keeps encouraging it. She'll ask him to help with things like fixing her computer or moving furniture. And when I offer to come, she says, No, it's fine. I just need him for a quick favor. They've been spending time at the gym and attending similar events due to having similar jobs. My mom always says how nice it is that they're bonding. And my dad once joked, Maybe you're just holding him back, sweetheart. Tara's more on his level. I know they mean well, but it's starting to mess with my head. My fiancé loves me, I know he does, but I can't help but think that maybe he'd be happier with someone like Tara. They're similar and I feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not as confident or outgoing as her and I think my family sees that too. At our last family dinner, Tara commented on how my fiancé is the perfect guy and how any woman would be lucky to have him. My dad laughed and said, well, there's still time for that, which made everyone awkwardly laugh, even my fiancé. I felt sick. I've been thinking, maybe it'd be better for everyone if I stepped aside. I don't want to hold him back from being with someone who's actually his equal. My family already seems to think they're better suited for each other, and honestly, I feel like I'm the odd one out in my own relationship. Am I the idiot for breaking up with him to make everybody else happy? I'm not asking about myself and my feelings, I'm asking if it's cruel to my fiancé. Girl, not the idiot. They do not freaking mean well. Damn, get yourself some therapy if you see what they're doing as a caring thing. Stop putting up with these people. Talk to your fiancé about what you're feeling. He laughs because it's a, holy heck, these people are terrible, nervous laugh. Also, the sister is probably not that great if she's going along with this crap. OP has been treated like crap for too long to see it. OP, you need to realize that you are deserving of good things. Therapy can help with your self-confidence and realizing that your family has not been supportive or healthy for you. You don't get to decide who's better for your fiancé. That's his decision, and he chose you. Her sister sounds like an absolute witch for trying to steal her sister's fiancé, and the family is even worse for encouraging it. You are an idiot if you let your family ruin this relationship. They don't love you. They're using you to try and gain access to your soon-to-be husband so he can marry their other daughter. They're actively pushing them together, and you're letting them. Do you look forward to family gatherings of them hugging and kissing? Holding hands and snuggles? Cute names and giggling? You're going to do that to yourself. Real talk, that's freaking stupid. Grow your backbone and fight for your relationship and future. My wife rescued a cat a year ago. He is the most frustrating, annoying creature on the planet. He screams for attention 24-7. He doesn't allow us to do anything without his input. I haven't slept through once since we got him. He wails all night, incessantly. He's cost us thousands of dollars in vet bills and behaviorists are trying to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. Ultimately, he's an orange cat and apparently they're prone to being idiots. He's healthy and has all of his needs met. He's treated better than most cats. I'm at my wit's end. He wants wet food 24-7 and screams all night until someone gives in and feeds him. He's kept me awake for hours. If he's not screaming, he'll scratch at the wall or door. He just stands there, scraping his feet against the wall, staring into my soul. 
I was a single father for the first years of my son's life, and let me tell you, working 14-hour days and coming home to a colicky newborn was easier than whatever freaking torture methods this cat is trained in. I want to get rid of the cat. My wife knows how hard he is and doesn't think he'll be adopted, so she doesn't want to give him up. At this point, I do not care. I told her she could move into the garage with him at night and deal with him solo, or we could get rid of him but I refuse to suffer any longer because this fat orange cat can't survive an hour without a meal. My wife is pretty upset. We took on the responsibility of a cat together. We should keep looking for solutions together, and she shouldn't have to suffer solo just because she doesn't want him to end up on some youth list. I do not care. I'm exhausted. My kids think I'm evil, but also refuse to do anything to help with the cat, so I'm not super keen on listening to them. Am I the idiot for telling my wife she can either sleep with the cat locked in with her or get rid of him? Not the idiot. You are at your wit's end and it's clear that something must change. But before you accept a euthanasia solution for this orange oligarch, <laughs> consider an intermediate solution. Make a nice little area in the garage with water, food, a litter box and a comfy bed for him. Be kind to him, feed him well during the day and put him in the garage at night with some provisions away from you both and the kids. Get him in the morning. Keep to the same times each day. Treat him well, but make it clear that this is a permanent schedule. Add a noise machine if necessary. He will complain. Your wife and kids will complain, but you deserve the opportunity to have peace and a full night's rest, and it's not cruel to the cat. To this, I would add, play with the cat during the day. Laser, flirt pole, cat hamster wheel, something. I wonder if he's just bored and eating is the only interesting thing that happens during the day. By the way, I get Alexa to read Star Trek audiobooks overnight in our living room, so our idiot cat stops yowling. I'd say 85% success rate. You are the idiot. I wonder if your wife realizes that the cat has trained the two of you to feed him every hour. Clearly, the wailing and crying are working for him. An animal behaviorist should have told the two of you a long time ago to give the cat two reasonable portions of nutritious cat food per day and remove uneaten food until the next meal, no matter how much he carries on. You could have gotten this behavior under control with some tough love if you'd started immediately. I, 25 female, have been married to my husband, 28, for three years. My husband, I'll call him Joel, and I met in college and got married very young. We've always dreamed of having a big family, but I've always wanted to be a stay-at-home mother. Joel and his mom have always been close, but it wasn't until recently that I noticed how unsettling their relationship truly is. For starters, Joel's mom, I'll call her Amy, has always been insanely protective over him. Although he's fully an adult man, Amy only refers to Joel as, Hey baby boy! Amy insisted on having the first dance with Joel at our wedding, and because she was paying for most of it, I let her have that, but I put my foot down when she suggested that she should wear a cream dress as the mother of the groom. Amy lives in our neighborhood and has habitually shown up unannounced and invited herself into all aspects of our lives. A few months ago, I found out that I was pregnant with our first baby, but just a few months in, I tragically lost the pregnancy. Before the pregnancy lost, Joel and I had been over the moon. Amy was so excited to be a grandmother, but some of her actions made me uncomfortable and angry. For starters, she insisted that she come to all of the appointments for the baby. When we heard our baby's heartbeat, she jumped up out of her chair, snatched Joel's hands and began to cry with excitement. Joel threw his arms around her, pointing out her grandbaby's heartbeat while I was left sitting there on my own. Although it was still early in the pregnancy, Amy proposed throwing her own grandbaby shower to get supplies for the baby to be kept at her house. I tried to shut this down, but Joel defended his mom again. When I felt the first kicks and movement, she ran over and nearly shoved my hand out of the way to try and feel. My final straw was after I lost the baby. I was devastated. Luckily, Amy was not over when I began noticing issues and Joel and I were able to go to the hospital alone. But after calling his mom to tell her what was happening, Amy showed up at the hospital and cried so loudly Joel had to escort her out of the hospital and comfort her in her car. Once again, I was left there alone. This broke me. However, Joel apologized profusely and said that he regretted leaving me. I've had a hard time finding forgiveness for that moment. I must emphasize that our relationship has been nearly perfect, besides his unusual relationship with his mother. 
After the loss, though, I started sleeping in the guest room and taking more time to myself to sort out my thoughts and decide where to go from here. Everything was fine until a few months ago. I had a few too many glasses of wine at a friend's wedding and ended up spending the night back in our main bedroom. I started to notice the same familiar changes in my body from my first pregnancy, which terrified me. I finally took a test and stared at the little plus in disbelief. Although I want to be a mother more than anything, I couldn't help but feel the same feelings from my last pregnancy. Maybe it was the wrong choice, but I didn't tell Joel right then. I booked an appointment and went to the doctor and found out that I was about six weeks pregnant already. This is where I may be the idiot. That was about three months ago, and I still haven't told Joel. I'm now 18 weeks pregnant and just starting to show more. I've started wearing big sweatshirts and baggy clothes around the house. I have loved being pregnant and not having to share the spotlight with Amy. This week, I felt the first little flutters of the baby moving and didn't have to share it with anyone else. In just a few weeks, I can learn his or her gender and not risk having to throw a grandbaby gender reveal for my mother-in-law. Maybe most importantly, God forbid anything were to happen to the pregnancy again, I would rather handle it alone than have to deal with consoling her. But now I need to figure out where to go from here. Obviously, I can only keep this up for so long, but how do I explain to Joel that I've been hiding the pregnancy from him for months? Should I just run away and start a new life? Mostly kidding. Or am I already in too deep? So I might as well just keep hiding it for as long as possible and not have to share my moment with anyone else. I love my husband and don't want to leave him, but I don't know how to save the situation in our marriage. Am I the idiot? So your husband went off to comfort his mother outside while you were crying over your loss. It seems like he will always have his priority be his mom. After that, it seems like a smart move not to tell them. Not the idiot. Move back to your own family till the baby is here. Tell the hospital you don't want your mother-in-law at your appointments and in the room at birth. They will enforce it for you. Your husband will always take his mother's side. I understand why OP moved to the guest room, but staying in that holding pattern... Raising your child when you won't even be allowed to act as a mother due to mother-in-law usurping the role is going to be awful. The husband is just going to let mother-in-law do what she wants and apologize later if you're lucky, OP. I'm honestly disappointed in OP for staying with him after this. Sure, she moved to the guest room, but that seems like an underreaction to being left to go through that alone while your husband comforts his mother instead of his wife, who's the one going through the tragedy directly. Like, what the heck, dude? Your husband is a mama's boy. If you want to salvage your marriage, you need counselling individually and as a couple. You and your hidden pregnancy are not the problem. Joel and his invasive mother are the problem. Divorce will be exactly what she wants and she will push Joel to go for full custody so she can raise your child. You need serious professional help with this toxic dynamic. I'm 21 female and my older sister 25 female and I have always been close but we tend to clash because she's a perfectionist and gets hostile when things don't go her way. One night she called to say she was going into labour and asked me to watch her puppy. I agreed and she gave me detailed instructions including putting the dog in a safety harness when taking him outside. Later I took the dog out and brought him back in but I hadn't fully taken off his harness when he ran towards the living room where my mom was on FaceTime with my sister's boyfriend. I finished taking the harness off, but minutes later, I got angry texts from my sister accusing me of mistreating her dog because he was still in the harness for a few extra minutes. Her boyfriend had seen it on the FaceTime call and told her. She then called, yelling that I was lazy and unreliable, and told me and my mom to leave her house immediately. She even said we wouldn't meet the baby until we earned her trust back. At 2am, we left, and I asked her boyfriend what was going on when he arrived. He just brushed me off saying, we're having a kid, you don't get an explanation. I spent the night comforting my mom who was really upset, thinking she might not see her grandchild. The next day, my sister called to apologize and blamed her reaction on stress and hormones. She invited us over to meet the baby, so we went. The visit was fine, but she asked why I seemed quiet afterward. I calmly told her how hurt I was after being kicked out, insulted and threatened. I explained that the situation left a lasting negative memory for everyone. Her boyfriend missed moments at the hospital, my mom was devastated, and now her in-laws probably think we can't handle helping her. I just wanted her to acknowledge my feelings. Instead, she got defensive again, saying she stood by everything she said and that I was disgusting for trying to put a dark cloud over her baby's birth. 
She then asked me to leave, which I did. We haven't spoken since, and while I understand she's under a lot of stress, I'm left wondering if I'm wrong for wanting my feelings to be acknowledged. Not the idiot. So the boyfriend saw the dog in the harness on FaceTime and A. Decided his labouring girlfriend needed to know that information right away and B. Assumed, after seeing the dog for a few seconds with zero context before or after, that the dog was being left in the harness too long. He didn't correct the sister that he'd only seen the dog briefly and didn't know how long the harness was on before or after. It kind of seems like the boyfriend likes to stir crap. But also, why would a woman in labour care? And a puppy being in a harness is hardly abuse. Our trainer had us have the dog wear the harness a few times to get used to it before even using the leash. Not the idiot. Your sister does not get to blame hormones for this. She's just acting like a mean and controlling person. She can find someone else to dog sit and potentially babysit if she cannot apologise. I feel sorry for your sister's kid. And puppy.